Now, back with me, Luca Cordaro. You are back to host this battle with me. Now, let's kick off right away. Luca, what are we battling about tonight? Well, we are talking about a very controversial issue in our profession that is uh, the management of two missing teeth uh, uh, in the frontal zone or multiple missing teeth in the frontal zone with adjacent elements that needs to be replaced. So this is really a big challenge for every one of us when we have to treat such cases. Exactly, and I think you brought an example of a case that yeah. we can take a look at. If we can have the image here, it's a case that we can discuss easily. Uh, it is uh, a lesion uh, after a trauma, uh, like 15 years after this trauma. Uh, this patient was treated with an endo, uh, endodontic treatment on both central and lateral incisor, and we have a complication on the lateral. It has been treated with endosurgery already, but it's not working, as you can see, and there is a, a root resorption on the central incisor. So I think that uh, everybody would agree that those teeth have to come out, and we need to provide this young lady with a restoration. And uh, what are we going to do? Exactly. What are we going to do? Hopefully we'll learn more about that in the battle of tonight. So we would like your opinion as well. What would you do in this specific case? Would you choose no implants, a traditional restoration? Would you go for one implant or two implants? Now, if you're new tonight to participate with your vote, all you have to do is take out your phone again and scan the QR code, which is available both on screen right now and also continuously through the evening uh, below the video feed. And you'll be then automatically redirected to our secure slider website where you can easily cast your vote. While you do that, let's now welcome our two experts on the matter. Oscar Gonzalez Martin from Spain and Benedict Spies from Germany. Proper walk-up music like a true battle. <laughs> two giants in the ring. Welcome, gentlemen. Welcome. Welcome. Luca, who do we have? <coughs> well, we have here two real experts. Uh, Oscar is a Spanish colleague, has been trained in the US and in Geneva in Switzerland. And Benedict uh, is chairman of the Prosto department uh, in uh, Freiburg in Germany that has a really a great tradition, I would say, in, in the field. He's young, but he's taking over a big challenge. And we will see uh, what he can show us. Tonight, he is going to defend the traditional restoration approach and uh, Benedict is going to talk about the implant solution. Uh, it's going to be tough. So, Yeah, it's going to be tough. Uh, we invite you to keep voting and listen carefully and change your vote if you can. You can always go back and edit whatever you have submitted. And the way it works, we have invited you both to prepare a five-minute presentation, very strict on the clock, including a countdown timer to convince us of where you stand. And then after that, we'll continue to battle. Oscar, I think we start with you. As soon as you start talking, your five minutes start. Okay, thank you so much. Um, thank you, Luca, for, uh, for the introduction. So uh, um, this is a quite interesting situation because uh, when we are missing uh, several teeth in the front area, uh, we have a challenging situation always. Uh, and for many years, we have tried to... Uh, is working? Ah, yeah. There we go. Good. The magical screen. <laughs> Great, thank you. Uh, uh, for many years, we have tried to find uh, strategies uh, in order to uh, give some guidelines to where the implant should be and to have a, 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 a proper result. But it's different when we have a situation like that, when we are missing four teeth or six teeth, because we have space to deal with, than situation where we are missing just two, two or three. Why? Because the distribution is not that easy the spam is shorter, and we know that uh, this is a mandatory rule in order to have a decent result. So uh, among those situations, because we can distinguish between many of them, when we lose two central incisors, in my opinion, is the uh, more uh, predictable way for two implants. Why? Let me explain myself. Why? Because. Uh, Two central incisors are, are large, are big. So today that we are reducing the, the, the thickness of the implant, we have more room, more space, uh, especially between both implants. So in a situation like that, if you can pass uh, to, to the next one, uh, uh, I place these two implants, uh, the soft tissue looks fine, and at the end, um, 
at the end, even I get a shorter papilla, uh, we can live with it because uh, there is nothing to compare with. It's a unique papilla. It's in the center. It's symmetric. So at the end of the day, as long as the patient has something big in there, so the, uh, we can live with it. So this is, the, in my opinion, um, the most simple situation to deal with with implant. Simple is maybe not the, 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 the right word, but uh, I will say it's the most favorable. In my opinion, it's much more difficult if we have a situation where we have an asymmetrical missing teeth. We were missing central, lateral, we were missing lateral and, and canine. Why? First of all, we have less space to deal with. So uh, then we have to deal with that space in order to distribute in a, in a nice way. And we have tried to find ways of doing that. Because when, when we place two implants in that span and and, and they get too close, it's very difficult to solve a situation like that. It's practically impossible to, to go back, to, to, to gain back, to overcome this type of complications. Why? Because we know from, from, a, from a biological way, uh, from a biological perspective, and also from an anatomical perspective, that between these two implants, they are so close that nothing is going to really grow coronally. So if you take a look to the x-ray, you will see that it's almost impossible. Of course, it will be a different battle to discuss about this, but, uh, but at the end of the day, even you try to overcome that, I have to recognize that I couldn't get to the, to the result I want to. So what we have been doing? We have been trying to think in different strategies. We can think in place one single implant. Here is a, is a case beautiful done by my friend uh, Gustavo Avila. He plays one implant, one pontic, and if you, if you go from there, to, to the next one, it's beautiful. It's a great job. We have a pink papilla, we have, a, we have a, um, an area that it looks quite healthy, but if you compare with the, with the natural tooth, we are losing there. We are losing that battle against the natural tooth. What have we been doing? We have been trying to, to look for, uh, for uh, certain tricks in order to, to overcome that. For example, we have been doing, in cases of low smile line, we have been doing some pink papillas with a composite, with ceramic, in order to get uh, a nicer situation. So why, why we shouldn't go ahead and think in traditional dentistry? Traditional dentistry has been there for many years, and uh, especially in cases with a, a high smile line, uh, patient with uh, some uh, f faulty um, uh, the restoration that is not, is not working well now. We have a missing central and lateral. We have a periodontal case here that, unfortunately, uh, it will not be easy to, to, to be solved with implants. So uh, let's work with a traditional way. Let's try to uh, prep those teeth and... Last sentence, Oscar? Yeah and uh, try to, uh, to, to work in, in a more traditional way, try to um, um, think in, in, in ways of uh, keeping those teeth and, um, and, and getting a, a, a decent and a present result. Exactly. Let's see the last slide, because I think that uh, we want to see how it came out, the provisional here, and then... No, at the end, but it's not there any longer. Okay. It's not there any longer, you say. Any okay, so yeah. we might get into that when we discuss. Okay, so, very powerful debate. First round of the battle. I see Benedict still uh, standing strong. I see our audience is uh, voting on your case as well. Remind, uh, remind you, if you haven't voted, scan the QR code and you can always change what you think based on what you hear here on the desk. Should we go to the next battler? Yes, Benedict is going to tell us why he prefers uh, to correct this situation by using the implants, to restore this situation by using the implants. Please, Benedict. Okay, now it's my turn to convince the audience in favor of the implant solution. As maybe some of you might have screened the literature prior to this battle, you might have seen that literature regarding two adjacent missing teeth in the anterior zone is scarce. Still, I found a study from the Netherlands, from the group in Groningen, and they installed two adjacent implants in the anterior maxillary zone in 10 patients. And as you can clearly see from the results, um, there, that survival is not the big issue. In the anterior zone, we want aesthetic success. And even if 
treated by experts in the field, the inter-implant bone level was seen to decrease more than in between the implant and the adjacent teeth. And even experts did manage in only one out of 10 cases to have a soft tissue fill in between the implants, and they judged only six out of 10 um, cases to be acceptable. So no wonder that according to the SAC classification per se, two adjacent implants are considered a complex case. However, and due to that reason, some experts even recommend to avoid two adjacent implants in the anterior zone due to uh, potential co aesthetic complications. Um, now, is the battle over? No, it is not, because I think there are some keys to follow, and you can even go for two adjacent implants in the anterior zone. And here is a nice key uh, case report published recently, and it gives us uh, 10 keys to success. Two of them are treatment planning, five of them are uh, surgical skills, and three of them are prosthodontically oriented. The first and most important is an aesthetic risk assessment. Let me show you a case of a patient that showed up in our department with a dental trauma ranging from tooth number eight to tooth number 10. As you can clearly see on that image and on the photograph, the tooth number nine was hopeless and you can still see the fracture on the root of tooth number 10. And luckily, we had a fracture on tooth number eight, which made the case, according to Oscar, more symmetrically and therefore more easy to treat. However, according to the aesthetic risk assessment, we were at a high risk regarding the span. We had two missing anterior teeth. Regarding the tooth shape, which was triangular, and regarding the gingival phenotype, which was thin and highly scalloped. Therefore, we decided to keep teeth for orthodontic extrusion in order to, buck, to thicken the buccal plate by a palatal direction of extrusion and in order to bring the soft and hard tissue up. You can see on the next slide that this was successful and we reached this level of soft tissue. Thereafter, we did a tomographic plan um, in order to verify that on the mesiodistal aspect in between the adjacent teeth, there is enough space to install the implants and to respect the minimal distance in between the implants and in between the implant and the neighboring teeth. Thereafter, we went on with a minimally traumatic tooth extraction and guided implant surgery in order to allow for a buccal gap of two to three millimeters. We did buccal bone graft with low substitution grafting material, as you can see on the left hand image. And thereafter, we prepared by a tunnel a split flap on the buccal side and placed some um, connective tissue that was harvested from the pellet. This is the final radiograph after surgery. And in that case, we decided to go for a delayed contour management of the emergence profile. Here you can see the design of the final zirconia abutment that was in the first instant restored with a resin provisional since we know from the literature that mid-facial recession occurs on the long term. So after half a more, six months more, we decided to go for the final restorations from, from ceramics and we prepared tooth number eight. And in order to have kind of a custom impression coping technique, we decided to go for a pickup impression. So we left the, the abutment in place and picked up the, the uh, copings for the final restorations and prepared the tooth and did the impression of the tooth. Thereafter, we needed to go for cementation, which is from a prosthodontic point of view, not the best solution. But by applying this rubber dam and this air block, we tried to be aware of all the cement remnants in order to prevent peri-implant infection. And as you can see from the occlusal aspect, I think it's a nice outcome. And we have a good volume of the soft and hard tissues. However, from the frontal side, you can see that it helped a lot that we could do that full veneer on tooth number eight. And we somehow changed the tooth shape from triangular uh, a bit. But I think it's still a nice result and very stable. And here is the final radiographic outcome. And we are very satisfied with that treatment, even though it has been two adjacent implants in the arterial zone and a bit an asymmetric situation. <laughs> He's holding for the last second. second yeah. year, right? Congratulations. <laughs> <That is. laughs> well done, well done. Yes. Okay. Everything in time, yes. Two battlers, yes. five minutes, but different cases, Luca. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, there would be a, a huge discussion. I, I want to clear up a little bit the field. I think that here we all agree that if we are missing two central incisors, or if we have to extract two central incisors, we would definitely go for two implant supported restoration. So we place sure. two implants in this case. So I think this, this problem is solved. 
But uh, the other issue is uh, when you have uh, a problem in adjacent, mis in adjacent teeth in the frontal zone, but you still have the teeth there. How do you manage the situation? Because it's a different story if the patients come in without the teeth or if they come in with the teeth to be extracted. So what, there's, what is your point on this? Yeah, I think you need to do all the planning I tried to present in my five minute pitch. For example, coming back to your situation you presented to us in your first slides, you have a horizontal bone loss in that situation, you have infected sites, therefore you cannot go for immediate implant placement, you need to take the teeth out, you need to wait, so you cannot preserve something, but you need to recreate something. And I think in that special case, for example, it wouldn't have been the best solution to go for immediate or later on to implants. Mm. But it's a completely different case, as you said before. Of course, of course. Shall we, shall we take a look at what the audience thought of that, what they should I do? I think it's uh, a good idea. Case, and then, uh. then build on that. So if you're just joining us in the beginning, Luca, you showed us the case and I asked you to vote. What would you do? No implants, one implant or two implants. And we see in the results that we have quite a division again. We have a, a proper two thirds, one third, uh, the, uh, the, the majority of the people vote for one implant. Yet still also almost 35 of the people still go, would go for two implants in that specific case. And very few people would say, well, I would go for no implant at all. Okay. I think there is another hot topic to address that is the fact if the adjacent teeth are intact or are prepared. The case that was shown by um, Oscar, uh, the, the last case, of course, we had a failing uh, restoration, so the teeth were already prepared. So I think that's an indi I think we all agree that that's an Same. indication to, do, to go for conventional dentistry. Absolutely. No, it's, there is many uh, factors that can influence in what, what uh, the decision is going to be. And one of them, of course, is if we have intact adjacent, adjacent tooth. But even though um, in, in this beautiful case that uh, uh, he presented to us, at the end, we can benefit for, for prepping the, the adjacent tooth because we know how to play with the contours of the tooth. And uh, it gives us an extra opportunity to make things look better. So. Uh, of course, to prepare a pristine tooth for placing a, a, a bridge, it will not be our first option. But sometimes we have a composite or we have a, um, a tooth that we can benefit from that. And then we have to think still that, uh, that we have a lot of scientific documentation that... Uh, and I, th and I think that, that also age is... Uh, yeah. is uh, something to consider because if you have uh, an old patient uh, with some issues in, uh, in the, in the uh, neighboring dentition, sure. it's not really a good idea to go and, uh, and do these extensive restoration. And one other topic that I want both of you to address to convince the audience or to change their mind is uh, you have shown Benedict a, a rather complicated treatment plan with a lot of phases. Uh, and uh, as we learned from uh, the previous, uh, tell me more about the more things you do, the more you risk to have a complication. So what is your point on this? Yeah, I totally agree. This is, isn't the case for the first years of clinical practice and we did a lot and maybe it works a bit better in a university setting, I know, because for example, only the orthodontic extrusion, it, it takes two months to extrude, six months to retain. So not every patient is dealing with this. However, I think a lot of patients are interested in, an, in a long-term outcome, you know? And I think with that result, we could maybe have a long-term outcome. For example, the, the fixed bridge that Oscar showed us, it is a very beautiful case, but however, we know the teeth were compromised. They had root canal treatment, they had posts, and we, like we, we agreed that there is very few data on, on two adjacent implants in the anterior zone. We likewise have uh, very few data on, on, mul on multiple teeth uh, or multi-span bridges, especially when they have root canal treated teeth and, and posts inserted. So it's a bit, it's a, it's a challenge, but on the prognosis, maybe it might be a bit better. Mm -hmm. Luca, I think I just heard Benedict throw a real punch. He <laughs> says, Oscar, your solution is not durable. No, 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 we, can, we cannot say that. If, <laughs> if, if there is something that has been proven, is that the fixed restoration on teeth works mm. for history. So that's is not is that's a real fact. But uh, the truth is that um, placing two implants in such a short span, mm -hmm. it may be beautiful, and he did an excellent job. But however, the risk is higher than 
placing a, a, a tooth supported restoration. Meaning, meaning that if you have a complication with two implants at that position, then you have a real problem. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that uh, I'm not placing implants. I place implants, and, uh, the, the, it w but I have to defend one position. I will say that uh, teeth are still an option, and we have to think on that, on that twice before go ahead and placing two implants in such a difficult situation. situation. I would agree with, uh, on this statement with Oscar that uh, uh, before going into a challenging uh, solution, if you have uh, something that is already compromised as a prep tooth, uh, you should really think uh, twice before going into complicated. Uh, I see we have a, a clarifying question from uh, Noah Grace from the United Kingdom. Uh, good evening, Noah. It was about this distance between the two implants. Basically, the question is, what was the distance between the two implants you used there? Oh, we, we had the minimal distance you, 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 you should have. It's three millimeters in between the implants, and. I think to the central incisor, we had a bit more than one and a half millimeter, but to the lateral, it was roughly one and a half millimeter. It's the and this general is the data we know from mm. the literature that is needed to keep the bone up on the teeth and the bony peak in between the implants to support the soft tissue and the papilla. And, and, and there is no question, in, the, in this particular case, it benefit from the teeth, mm -hmm. from the teeth that they were already there. The forced eruption, in my opinion, is the key of that particular case. So the, the teeth give the last service Actually, I think the, the, this is the, the key factor that makes that case so beautiful and, and, and which has a good result. The fact that if you bring down soft tissue and bone, it changes completely the perspective of the case. Of mm. course. Mm -hmm. But also the capability of bringing uh, up this, uh, this treatment plan. Absolutely. Because, and also the collaboration of the patient, because this patient had two mini implants placed in the palate for uh, skeletal anchorage to extrude the, the two uh, teeth that had needed to be extracted. So it's, it's really complicated. And you, need, treatment. You, you need several masters there. Uh, yes, absolutely. Exactly. Now, Luca, would you like to share with us what you did in the specific case we oh, yeah. talked about and the audience voted on? Okay, according to what, uh, to what Benedict uh, was, uh, was saying, uh, we didn't dare to go for immediate placement. That I have to say something that I rather do in the aesthetic zone. Uh, I find it uh, to add a challenge to a challenge. Uh, <laughs> so uh, what we did, we extracted the teeth and waited for eight weeks uh, for the early implant placement protocol. So we could solve the case. If we can go to the next image, you see the baseline situation and with only one implant in the central incisor and uh, a simple surgical procedure because we just placed the implant in the pristine bone and did a contour augmentation with a GBR, we could uh, solve the, 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 the case. And uh, we just had to add some minimal mucogingival surgery, plastic surgery on the canine that had a, a small um, uh, recession and, and that was needed to give uh, a better symmetry and a better uh, view to the situation. And if you go to the last slide, you see that uh, with a rather simple approach, uh, and I think also with a predictable approach, we could solve the, prob the, the problem with, uh, uh, at the end, only one surgery. Mm. So in the fact, it's, it's the best of both worlds, right? <laughs> you went for one implant with a pontic. With the draw. <laughs> Is it a draw? Yeah. yeah, I think so. yeah, they think it's a draw. I think it's a draw, yes, definitely. Because the issue here is that these are challenging situations. You cannot give rules. You have to keep in mind that uh, uh, you have to be very careful in treatment planning. Try to find the simpler solution for the patient. And of course, if you have a chance to benefit from the teeth, always keep in mind that the teeth are there and that we can use them in a very predictable way. Exactly. Oscar, if I may, in the last two minutes, what is one thing you hope this audience remembers from your contribution here today? I would just say that the, the most important thing is to make a correct diagnosis, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Uh, there is uh, many solutions up there, and, um, and I think we have to really pay attention to every detail, because one single detail, it will change the, the treatment. Exactly age, uh, smile line, um, uh, the, the, the fact that we have uh, uh, healthy teeth uh, around the, the area, the teeth are present or not. So just make a good diagnosis and then uh, elaborate a, a, the corresponding treatment planning. Exactly. Benedict, if you could underline one learning that our audience takes home tonight. 
Uh, if you go for such challenging cases, I think it's very important to, to make your treatment plan, and not only with yourself, but also with the patient, with his expectations, and with the dental technician. And if you're not a, both a prosthodontist and a surgeon, do it vice versa with your prosthodontist or with your surgeon. This is very important. Uh, stick to those rules, and you may have success, but you may fall a lot if you fail. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you very much. I think uh, they did a great job. It was a very challenging uh, clinical situation and you showed uh, uh, the ideal solution for your two approaches. Thank you very much. Exactly. It seems we conclude a draw, but still thank you all three of you for such an interesting battle.